All right. We are live and we are happy. This is the Terp Talk Post Game Show brought to you by the Jack Lidge Law Group, Maryland. 35 and a stunner at Penn State, 19. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. And the very happy fellow on the other end of this camera is Bruce Posner. What did you see in Happy Valley, Bruce? Well, I saw what you have and what happens when you have a five-star receiver playing for you. Two touchdowns early on, and James Franklin had the stupidity of giving us not putting in a field goal early on. Mason, I thought that was really stupid. And uh, Maryland just kept moving and stomping and uh, maybe even played like way out of their element early in that first half, going for everything. And that last touchdown in the first half, you kind of felt that was the uh, coup de grace. And then Chase Campbell, what was great about that play? He was so reserved, so calm when he picked up the ball and ran in. He just was so cool about it. Got the touchdown, 35-7. to seven. At that point, it was hang on. I was hoping for a, a push-in-your-face blowout, but they tried, and then they just gave up on it when that flea flicker didn't work. Face, what do you have? <clears throat> I mean, really a solid game from the Terps. And, and the adjustments that we talked about on the radio and the podcast this week uh, were definitely there. The Terps shift to a 4-3 look, mostly played Sam O, number 97, uh, <clears throat> as a true defensive end. And they really just tweaked the game accordingly to what people uh, thought they needed to do, what the experts said they needed to do. And then... Uh, on offense, they just continued to execute the plays pretty much as they're written. You know, last year we saw a lot of those quick slant looks that they could have, you know, broken off or something big. The ball was late. The receiver dropped the ball. When you got a guy like Rack Jarrett with, with the seemingly coordination that Tunga Vailoa has in the offense, you're not missing your cues. You're making the plays you need to make early and often. And you just kind of have to put up the props of the quick start for this team, what it does for them emotionally. They weren't bogged down like they were last year against Penn State, and they get the win. What a changing of, what a changing of the guard in the Big Ten way. Well, today, uh, amazing results from Indiana, from Maryland. First of all, you got to look at Mike Loxley, who's been chasing this win as a head coach for years. He's been at Maryland for a long time. He got to be the head coach when Maryland goes to Penn State. It's the most points Maryland's ever scored against Penn State. The first time I think Maryland's ever been up 21 to nothing over Penn State. Loxley gets to take it to Franklin in Franklin's house. If you read the Twitter feed from Penn State, the, I'll paraphrase the entire Twitter feed, fire Franklin. I'll leave out the rest of the words. We'll just go with how fire. Strong, how strong out. negatively was it for Franklin on that site? Like crazy strong? Crazy strong. Negative. I got to give huge props to these uh, mostly unheralded, unheralded transfers. Mo Kite wears 34 up front. Amu Finau wears 55. He's the one with the cast on his hand. Uh, you got to look at Tarheeb still as a shutdown corner. Maryland hasn't had one in so long. Um, so many good things happened today that if you're a casual fan, you might not have seen. But the aggressiveness that Maryland finished the plays, how important, guys, is it to finish those plays on defense and make those tackles? Well, we've been amazing. We've, we've been all over uh, Brady Hoke, and you couldn't do that today because they virtually shut down the uh, defense, uh, the offense of Penn State. The secondary lived up to its preseason reputation. Uh, Cross and number 12 were both great. Cross got beat a couple times deep, but one time, I mean, one time the game was over, the one, the early touchdown. But what you see from the defense, again, you say it was the 4-3. You mentioned that on the show the other day. You think it was that much of a difference? Right. I'll kind of point out the things I talked about on the podcast, which was they really weren't playing two safeties most of the game. They left Cross back out there, let him play center field. They brought Jordan Mosley up to really rush the passer as somewhat of the jack position, a little bit off the edge, you know, late delay blitzes. So when the quarterback runs, you have somebody to address that. And then 
if you look at what Penn State does well, running the ball is probably last on that list. And that continued today. As bad as Maryland's rush defense has been this season, Penn State can just not run the football. They're bad on the offensive line. Their quarterback seemed banged up. Um, really wasn't getting around in his throws, wasn't driving the ball into any kind of zones. Was, I mean, Clifford's really hung out to dry in this offense. It's all him. He's got one good wide receiver, a good tight end, but they don't have any run game to support him. And look, if you look at it from that perspective, the Terps will be good against teams that can't run the football. You and I went to Penn State five, six years ago. Maryland won. Christian Hackenberg was left out to dry in a similar way in a Franklin offense. Was all of Franklin's success based on McSorley and the, the, the tailback? Yeah, I mean, Barkley and Miles Sanders are fantastic football players. There's, there's no doubt about that. I don't really think you can point at Penn State and say it was all of them. I mean, they're both, they were both great players. But if, if you were somebody looking at this from the Penn State angle, this has to be near rock bottom. I mean, rock bottom for memorable history. You just got beat by Indiana. Ohio State, fine, he can throw that one away. Uh, not a good look from Penn State. And just a fantastic moment in so many ways for Maryland on the recruiting trail as a program. You had a bunch of people clowning you last year, and, and rightfully so. Now you can point at a year over your progress is something you got to talk about and just monumental for the recruiting trail. What does this win mean in Baltimore, Bruce? I, it, it means everything. It means everything wherever you're looking for football players. I mean, there it was. We always say last year was a probably set us back an entire year when Penn State came in. What was it, 59 zip? And here again, once again, I have to tell you, though, you ought to call Ben and Adi and tell him to get on our games because those two people were just, they were just, they were dead. They never really talked about the impact of a Maryland win over Penn State. They never mentioned it. It was like, oh, Maryland's a better team. I knew this was, how could they? Anybody say that going into this game when you're a four touchdown underdog? Well, we will pick that up in a minute, but uh, talking about people we need to remember to be excited about, I'd like to thank Rick Jacklich for sponsoring all of these post games, and his ad will be up in a second. I also want to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers in Rockville and your hometown Terrapin Tech Team at Viner Four Gates Consulting. And you can reach them at 877-797-8776. We will be back to talk stats and, and the overall impact in our lives. The beating Penn State brings the happiness in a moment. You are listening to the Turp Talk Big Dog Post Game Show. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call the Jacklidge Law Group. We have decades of experience handling truck crashes. We recognize issues unique to trucks, including black box findings and DOT regulations. We find insurance others don't know exists. Some think the only coverage is with the truck, yet we've found millions more insurance with the broker. It's important to collect information and find representation immediately. Truck cases are complex. If you've been hurt in a truck crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1 right now. Back here on our Young Turp Talk, Turp Talk simulcast. I, I'm giddy with this win, Maryland, 35-19 over Penn State. Bruce, you were just uh, talking before we went to break about the announcers. I thought that suddenly they seemed excited about Maryland, but they were completely as unprepared as everybody else. What do you what do you see, Mason? Yeah, two weeks in a row, and and. Having done not games like this, where they're moving around from site to site nationally. Producers just aren't prepping Maryland. The the announcers not giving them the notes for Maryland to really be at a competitive game. Last week we saw on ESPN. This week on on the Big Ten Network, where it's a little bit more unexpected. But you know, you're expecting a blowout as an announcer. You pull out everything you can about the team that you think is going to be winning. And I mean, they were just clean out of like facts to throw out there about the Terps and and that. Yeah, I mean, it showed big time. They're not – well, look, uh, the Penn State guy really wasn't ready to talk all Maryland. Penn State went through hell and back with brain uh, cancer or some kind of cancer. and so. But to to take this game as if, well, we knew Tagliavoe was great and Maryland was going to, you know, that Penn State couldn't deal with it. What the hell What the hell do odds makers know? 25 point – I think it went up. 25 point favor? I mean – Okay, let's go over what what you didn't expect. 
I thought Penn State's pressure was going to get to them. They got one sack when the game mattered, really. So well, that didn't happen. You're right. And I'll tell you what else. If he threw a pass to Brian Cobb over the middle, in the middle of the fourth quarter, had he caught that ball, that would have been it. Not that we would have scored again, but it would have been one more series, two and a half more minutes. He dropped it for some reason. And then Dante Dimas ran the wrong pattern. Yeah. All right. And I do believe the guy had the first down on that third and nine. Yeah. Got a bad spot. That but was Daryl Jones. Look, okay. So Franklin waved the surrender flag at the end. He didn't call his timeouts. He ended the game with two timeouts in his pocket. He just wanted to get it. To, he just wanted to get the game over with. Get off TV before people were going to put on the Ohio State Rutgers game. You know, yeah. but Rich Jackson was uh, texting me from the Galapagos. He was uh, he was in a, some kind of boat looking at sharks, and I'm giving him play by you know score by score. And Bruce Laird was ready to faint. He was texting me from the golf course. Nobody could believe it. So let's go over one other thing I don't think we expected. Rock Jarrett got matched up on what we were told nationally was a pretty good defensive backfield that featured former Maryland uh, – number. Maryland really wanted uh, Tariq Castro Fields. He wears number five for Penn State. We heard how great they were against Ohio State, and Rock just runs through them. Does he look like Stephon Diggs to you now, Bruce? He's got a lot of the same look, except the advantage that Rock Jarrett has, he has a quarterback, all right? He's got a, a guy, you know, uh, throwing, the, throwing the rock who knows what he's doing. And I think when you look at everything here over the last couple of games, you see what Maryland's been lacking, and it's been the QB. Because Talia, he just has it. Everything he does is so far right. Okay, he had a bad first game. It was his first game ever, but he had a great first series, and then he fell apart. But, wow, you look at it now, and I like to get Northwestern again. That's so much for that. It's not going to happen. But, uh, yeah, listen, out of all our games remaining, we got to say honestly that next week is probably the only game that they could not pull off, pull off a victory. I'm not saying, you know, the other teams are definitely going to be favored, but it won't be a, as big an upset now if Maryland beats even Indiana, all right, or Rutgers or Michigan. Holy cow, how much heat is Harbaugh in, all right? About as much as Franklin probably, maybe a little more. Oh, I think that Harbaugh might be – if he loses to Ohio State, look, he's one and two now, and he's got to play Ohio State. And all of a sudden, his game against Maryland's not going to be easy, all right? It's not going to be a, a whitewash, but – what a difference a year makes. And look, Loxley was right when he said he had to get better players. Who were the guys from Independent Shoe that played today? Because I did hear some names I haven't heard. Well, I have one other thing, and we'll run that down with Mason. If you say what didn't Maryland have and what they have now, they have the number five combo quarterback, which is run pass quarterback from three years ago class, and that's uh, Leah Tungliavoa. They have a guy, similar guy in Lance Lejean who doesn't even play, and they have the number two receiver from this year's class. If you give me the fifth best quarterback and the second best receiver, maybe this is what you get because that that is what? A lot more than that. And I mean, we can probably go a long time on this. It's consistency of coaching on the offensive line. It's the fact that they also have, was it three other four-star wide receivers? Jay Sean Jones, Daryl Jones, Dante Demas, and Brian Cobbs. Yeah, I mean, they got all kinds of guys. They just needed the quarterback and the consistency okay. up front. All right, so guys who transferred in the plate a lot. Johari Branch plays at guard on the offensive line. What'd you make of his game? He's a tough guy. I mean, that's what we've heard since the preseason. The staff loves him. He's a little stiff. I think he's not the best pull blocker, but that's fine. He gets okay. up field and... Really what that allows them to do is it lets 73 Johnny Jordan, the center, just lay people out. I mean, I saw it one probably four times in this game. He gets upfield and he can make the blocks. Okay. Let's go to Jacory and Bennett, where's number two is a defensive back transferred in. He played most of the game. Now, if yeah. I mean, Mason said to me when Johnny Jordan opted back in, he Mason said to me, he were his words, this could be a game changer. All right. This 
this fills a horrible void that that line was going to have. All of a sudden, the line looks great. Jake Funk had another uh, big touchdown run. I mean, yeah. think this is Penn State we're playing. This right. is this is a Towson. You know what I mean? No offense to Towson, but this isn't like you know, when you put up numbers against bad teams. Jake Funk is putting up numbers against great teams. So is Talia. And uh, wow, I tell you what, I, I'm sitting on top of the world tonight. To me, it's just like beating Duke. There's yeah. no doubt about it. This was like how I felt when Mary yeah, better in basketball. In a way, it was better because we beat Duke a lot. And this is three times in 41 years, you know, and what, 90% of those games were blowouts, literal okay. blowouts. Absolutely. So back to you know, Jacorian Bennett transferred in on defense. Yep. Finau, 55. Yeah, and then the guys up front. I mean, a lot of guys up front. Uh, Sam Rose a transfer in, but he was here last year. Mo Kite, 34, is getting – I think he's getting better and better game over game. Uh, TT, number 91, he was in there a lot when they got into the twos and threes. Cherokee Glass now is a guy that's getting a lot of a run now. 77, you saw him a lot of late games. And then – the guy that I think has made the biggest impact is they finally got themselves, Bruce, a true nose tackle. 55 feet now. He's got the club on his hand right now. He'll be even better once that's gone. They need guys to eat blocks. What they didn't have was guys that were 330 pounds. Now they got those guys, and suddenly Chance Campbell, Gote, Hippolyte, A.C. Lee, they all look better because we knew they had great players that's at the true. inside linebacker spot, but they were just getting eaten up. And we talked about this yesterday, the, the change that we saw in Maryland against Minnesota. So they got to the fourth quarter. They let the big guys up front eat on the offensive line. They weren't there to make tackles. They were there to make sure the offensive line stayed off the linebackers. And as soon as they freed up the linebackers by sacrificing their own game, you saw Campbell blow up. You saw hits from Gote and Ely. You see Mosley getting in there because they don't have a 330-pound guy blocking them. They're finally able to absorb the blocks, and the Maryland linebackers now exactly mirror the running back from the offense, and they meet at the line of scrimmage, and you know what? We're making 95% of those tackles. Well, I think it's I, like three plays, third and two, at the end of this, first, second and two, third and two, they didn't even get near scored until the receiver made an incredible catch on fourth down. But it was time again, and I think Nick Cross came into his own today a little bit. And this number 12, we got a stud. He's a stud. He, I mean, still yeah. is his name. I tell you what, I got to rewatch the game and really start studying these guys so I can stay up with Mason because he knows every one. And I'm starting to learn them, but there's so many of them. Yeah. You, know, you really have to study – to get a feel for it. And right. That's the other thing they're doing on defense really quick is they're playing a ton of guys, and it's starting to help them out. And and that's one thing that if you look at really Durkin's era, not as much last year. Last year you can kind of throw away. Durkin's era, they were stuck on playing like 11 guys after the first year, and it didn't work out for them. They're rotating, keeping guys fresh, because if you really look at it, the difference between one to two isn't as significant as it has been in the past. Oh, no. We have some twos that can play. We have to get to the press conference, the Michael Oxley of press conference. I I'll ask both you guys this. So this year we lost that quarterback to Oklahoma, right? I forgot his name. Caleb. What was his name? Caleb Williams. All right. You think he watches this game today, he looks at Oklahoma, and they're, like, kind of struggling. He sees what Loxley's done with Talia. All right? Probably not. They're all elite. He's not going to change. He's not going to decommit. He don't want to come to Maryland now if Talia's going to be there for two more years, you know. But in the future, you know, like receivers, and I mean, when you see Talia and that kind of offense, I think Loxley did himself a world of good today, a world. Not that he hasn't been recruiting, but, you know, he did himself a world of good with that win today. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up and get to the presser. After the Ravens game, Bruce and Mace are going to review that one. Also, will be up on Turp Talk. Uh, Bruce is on the radio Monday morning on WNST with uh, Bruce Laird still with you on that one. Laird and uh, Carl Science and, uh, you know, other people. You know, Todd Carton once in a while and Mason sleeps too late. I might wake him up this uh, Monday to talk about the Terps. 
I got to squeeze that in because that's all Ravens. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. But, uh, all right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for watching. It has been a spectacular night as Maryland takes down Penn State for the second time in my <laughs> life and the second time in Happy Valley. It's been great. And we will see you on the radio with Turp Talk and the Sports Maven, both on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Hey, let's just say we're 2-1, and one, right? Yes. Do we go a bowl with four wins or three wins? They probably can go with three or four wins. I'm not sure what the rules are going to be. Yeah, who cares? We'll go, this, game, we'll go that, this game is the whole season to me. Everything yes. else is, is the whipped cream on the cake. You know, you this game, And I know uh, you I, were probably somewhere in your heart you're sick. You, you two guys weren't there because you'd have been there. I know. Yep. I know. I know you said it to each other right or wrong. Yo, yeah. You wouldn't have been there. No way in the world. All right. Great night. All right. We will all see you on the radio. Good evening.